Hi there, everybody. Sean Craig from University St. Anne here, uh, filling in for Emily Doucette, who uh, is away at vet school. So she asked me to uh, uh, to take this one on on board. So I'd like to talk a little bit about some work we've been doing at uh, at Université Saint Anne um, with uh, fall migration of northern sawwood owls. Uh, this is a larger project that involves collaborators also from Acadia University, uh, Saint Avex University, and Birds Canada. Um, we've undertaken some uh, recent telemetry work looking at uh, the amount of time that saw whites are remaining at the, the stopover site at St. Anne, but also looking at larger scale movements of, of saw whites away from, from the area. Uh, those uh, data will not present here, but we're going to talk just a little bit, a bit more about some of the, the trends that we've been seeing in terms of fall migrations of saw whites um, at Church Point. Um, so there's essentially two leading hypotheses into what drives eruptive fall migration. So an eruptive fall migration being a year um, in which capture rates are relatively high and that also tend to be dominated by younger birds um, in, in, in some cases, um, depending on the authority that you're looking into. So one hypothesis is food scarcity. And this would drive both adults and immatures to disperse from breeding sites in search of prey. So fall stopover sites, such as the one that we have at, on the campus at University of St. Anne, we would expect then to see both adults and young birds moving through. A second hypothesis uh, relates to increased breeding productivity. So this would be just prior to the fall migration season. And we might expect in these cases um, dispersal of a large number of immature birds from breeding sites, uh, whereas maybe adults would hang by uh, closer to the breeding areas in response to higher amounts of food uh, around breeding territories. So maybe the adults would not move as much as large numbers of, of immature birds produced during these, these elevated breeding years. Uh, we've been studying fall migration of, of sawwets on the campus of Université Saint Anne in, in Church Point, Nova Scotia, so along St. Mary's Bay uh, since 2012. And we've had sort of three overarching objectives of this project, which actually is tied into uh, North America's Project OwlNet, um, which is a series of, of banding stations uh, that collaborate and try to standardize data collection methods when it comes to monitoring sawwets during fall migration. So first of all was to describe annual variability in, in capture rates, so density of birds moving through, and also the ratio of immatures, uh, HY or hatch year, to adults, AHY. Secondly was to examine the link between northern sawwood owl breeding abundance, and um, there's breeding abundance data um, from Birds Canada's Atlantic Nocturnal Owl Survey, which undertakes survey routes throughout PEI, New Brunswick, and Nova Scotia. Here we'll only present data from, from Nova Scotia and see whether there's a link with um, capture rates or the density of migrants that we see during fall migration at St. Anne. And then thirdly, to look into whether body condition, um, which is a, a function of wing length and body mass, varies with uh, migration density or capture rate. So I'd just like to briefly highlight uh, three sort of key results um, that we've obtained with data going back to 2012. So what we've seen is that each two years, fall migrations are typically dominated by hatchier birds, so young birds, and relatively high capture rates. Um, and that's depicted in figure one. So really what we're seeing is, is different amplitudes of, of eruptive migrations occurring each paired year. So 2012, 2014, 2016, 2018, and 2020. Interestingly, capture rates uh, for all northern sawwood owls tend to be correlated with capture rates for just the hatchier birds, and it's a strong link, um, our value of 0 0.96. Uh, but this is not the case with after hatchier birds. So these eruptive years seem to be really characterized by just a flood of younger birds uh, that are moving away from, from breeding areas, and we're catching them at the banding station at Université Saint Anne. Secondly, those fall migrations that are dominated by young birds and that have the relatively high capture rates are also preceded by, by breeding seasons in Nova Scotia with elevated abundance indices for Nova Scotia. And we don't present New Brunswick here, but we found the same trend for, for New Brunswick. So this suggests, and it, it, it sort of links in nicely to that first result, is that 
Uh, every couple years, um, there's a bit of a boom in terms of the number of Sawwets breeding in Nova Scotia. And then large numbers of, of hatch ear, which are the, uh, the result of this, this boom in reproduction, uh, are dispersing during fall. Uh, and we're catching some of these birds, it seems, down at, uh, down at St. Anne. And in terms of the third result, um, it, it, it tends to suggest that, that body condition so again, function of wing length and body mass doesn't really seem to be affected by capture rate. So even these years where capture rates are really high, you know, your 2012s, 2016s, um, those type of years, birds are not coming into the banding station with any lower condition scores than years um, where capture rates are, are, are much lower. So a couple of things to take home from, from that. Um, eruptive fall migrations of northern Sawalaws at this site anyway in southwest Nova Scotia appear to be a function of elevated breeding abundance followed by fall dispersal of hatch year, but not after hatch year birds. So this sort of supports the increased breeding productivity hypothesis. And indeed we do have those data from Birds Canada's Atlantic Nocturnal Owl Survey um, that do suggest that those years of eruptive migrations of, of young birds also tend to be years with a bit of a boom in terms of breeding abundance in the area. So we hypothesize that rodent prey availability for sawwets, so we're talking you know, particularly about voles, um, during years with eruptive fall migrations may be sufficient to sustain high breeding productivity um, in Nova Scotia and, and maybe even beyond in the Maritimes, but also to minimize any effects of elevated fall migrant density on mass gain. Anyways, we really appreciate the opportunity to be able to share some of these, these preliminary results. Um, we're really excited to, 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 to be able to have some data for Sawwets in, in the Maritimes. And this project could not have been possible without the, the support from the Nova Scotia Habitat Conservation Fund, uh, but also for University St. An, which helped us to buy nets to get everything set up back in 2012 to start this long-term project. Um, so Emily or myself, we'd be happy to answer any questions that you may have about, uh, about this uh, work. Thanks a lot.